Thank you guys for joining us this morning. My name is Kristen Kibblehouse and I am the Community Engagement Manager here at the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. The Atlantic White Shark Conservancy is a nonprofit based in Chatham, Massachusetts, so on Cape Cod. We are in the elbow, if you're familiar, Cape Cod looks like an arm, and where we are helping to fund and also conduct the research of great white sharks being done through the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries and with Dr. Greg Skomal. Today, we are going to be learning about shark tagging and shark tracking. We do have a worksheet available for this lesson. You are more than welcome to fill that worksheet out as I am going through today's lesson, or if not, you can fill it out afterwards as well. But today, let's get started with some shark tagging and shark tracking. So first off, when we are thinking about shark tagging and shark tracking, there's lots of different ways that we can research sharks through tagging and tracking. You can see here in this photo that this is a scientist team working up a nurse shark. So we can do all kinds of workups with many species of sharks. But why do you think that scientists would want to work up sharks? Or we can rephrase it as, what do you think scientists want to learn about sharks? What do we think? Now there's lots of different ways and things that we can learn about sharks. So what do you think that scientists are trying to learn about these animals in our oceans? Now there's lots of different ways that scientists can work up these sharks and lots of different methods to what we are trying to learn. So scientists would want to take samples so we can learn about different aspects of shark anatomy. These samples can be blood samples or tissue samples from the shark to learn more about their internal anatomy and what makes up a shark. They can take measurements of that shark to see how long it is, how big it is, and then you can track its growth throughout time if you're really lucky enough to be able to recapture that shark again. You can also apply tags like we're going to be talking about today to learn about how sharks are moving throughout our oceans. You can also perform an ultrasound. Now there are really awesome research boats that have an ultrasound machine on their research vessel and they can use that ultrasound machine to be able to look at a female shark and see if she is pregnant or not. And then last but not least, scientists can also look at stomach contents of sharks to be able to see what they are eating, to be able to learn about their food and their eating process. Now, we see that there's lots of different reasons why scientists want to look at sharks and research sharks, but there's lots of different methods as well to these shark scientists. Now you can see we have four different methods here. They can use a cradle, you can be on a boat, you can be in the water, or you can be from the boat. Now, the way that scientists pick their research method really depends on their resources, like what their boat might look like when they are doing shark research what shark species they are doing research on, and even the behavior of that shark or that shark species that they are wanting to do research on. So let's talk about using a cradle. Now this is a method that some researchers use to look at sharks. Now we can look at this photo and see that that shark is up out of the water and in that little net that looks like a cradle and that's how we get that method name is a cradle now for this a shark once it is caught gets swam up onto the cradle and you can see that cradle is then lifted out of the water and on the side of the research boat then these scientists being very safe have their hard hats on and their special gloves on because they are working off the side of their boat to perform research and you can see in this photo that that scientist has a measuring tape around the shark and they are measuring what is called the girth or how fat. 
the shark is. You can also tag from this kind of position as well and use measurements and take samples. You can be on the boat. Now we really use this kind of method for scientists that are looking at smaller species of sharks because then you can bring that shark right on to your boat to measure it. Like you can see here with this scientist, she has a smaller species of shark. It looks like an Atlantic sharp nose, but it's hard to see from the photo. And you can see that she is measuring that shark on the boat. You can also be in the water while studying your species of shark. Now, do you think you would want to be in the water with a more aggressive species of shark? Or would you want to be in the water with a more calmer species of shark? What do you think is more safe? Hmm. If you're saying a more calmer species of shark, you are correct because we want to make sure that our scientists are staying safe while studying these sharks, but we also want to make sure that shark species that we are looking at stays safe as well. So the shark that this research team is looking at is a sawtooth is a sawtoothed sawfish shark. Now it's hard to kind of tell what that shark looks like because it is flipped over on its back, so its belly is showing. These researchers are putting in what is called an acoustic tag, and we will talk about that tag in a little bit. Now, if you want to see what a small tooth sawfish looks like in a little bit smaller size, let's go back to this photo, and you'll see that these researchers are working up a juvenile or a baby sawtooth sawfish here in this photo. And then we have the larger one or the adult one here in this photo. So you can see that this species of shark does grow very large. And last but not least, we have the method of from the boat. And this is the method where researchers will do research on a shark species as that shark is still in the water. That shark is not captured. It is freely swimming and the researchers will gently drive their boat beside the shark to study it. And this is the research method that the research team here at the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy and the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries that they work to study the great white sharks here off of our coastline of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So this is that method of from the boat where these sharks are not hooked. They are still freely swimming and we are able to do research that way on these great white sharks there. Now, now that we know these different methods of working up a shark, what is an important step when studying sharks? What do we think that scientists have to do when studying sharks? Do you think that when we are working up a shark that we put the tag on it and then release it and that's it? Or do we think that we have to do something else with that. Hmm. When you are doing a science experiment, maybe at school or at home, what is an important step that you do? Is it take observations and take notes? If you are saying that, guys, yes, we have to take observations as scientists as well. So if you are following along on our worksheet, we are not going to fill out this part of our worksheet. If you do not have the worksheet, that is completely okay. You can still follow along. Or what you can do is that I'm going to type in, well, put in my answers for these observations, but you can put in your own observations. Maybe you can look outside and see what the weather is outside for your own observations. So let's get started. So. As a scientist, we always want to know what the date is so we know what days we are doing our research. So today is April 2nd of 2020. Now, we always want to make sure we have our vessel name or what boat we are on. Because, as I said earlier, looking at our methods of doing a workup on a shark, our method might change depending on what boat we are on. When I was in college, I worked on two different research boats and we had a smaller boat where we could not bring sharks on 
to do research. But then we worked on a larger boat, a, a pontoon boat, that we were able to bring sharks on that research vessel to study them. So it is always important to note what boat you are on. So today I'm gonna name my boat the Salty Dog, but you can name your boat whatever you want it to be. Next, we always have to look at the location of where we are studying these sharks. If, if I just say we are in the ocean, well, the ocean's really big, right? So when we think about that as scientists, we wanna be very precise in our location. So I can even be more precise in saying the Atlantic Ocean, but that's still not very precise of where I'm at. So what do you guys think? How can I be as precise as possible on where I'm doing my research? What do you guys think? How can we be as precise as possible when doing research? Hmm. If you're saying maybe we use a GPS, we can use a GPS. There are research boats that bring that GPS right on their boat, so they are able to know exactly where they are in the ocean. But for today, because I don't have a GPS on me, I am picking a spot called Shark Cove, which is a spot that here off of Cape Cod where this research team does see a lot of sharks. And then I did put our longitude and latitude of where Shark Cove is. Now, if you guys are following along at home, if you don't wanna use Shark Cove, maybe you are gonna imagine that your house is the ocean. Maybe if you ask your mom or your dad or someone to look up what is the longitude and latitude where you live today? And you guys can explore that as well. Now, we also have to look at weather observations because as scientists, we wanna make sure we are taking as many notes as possible for our research. So for weather, we do look at temperature, wind speed, the tide, and other kinds of observations. So for me today, because it's a really cloudy and rainy day here in Massachusetts. I want to imagine that it is a beautiful summer day. So these are my pretend weather observations. So I put that it is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. We have just a little breeze at five miles per hour coming out of the Southwest. We have a low tide and it is a sunny day with not a cloud in the sky. So we have no cloud cover, which I hope that soon we have that weather coming up, but it is the spring, so hopefully that spring showers, bring May flowers is going to be true for us this year. And then finally, we have our type of workup, which we are going to imagine today. We are on the research boat here off of Cape Cod, and we are going to be doing a from the boat workup today. Now, now that we have our observations, we have to find our shark to tag, right? So when we are doing a shark tagging day, sometimes it's hard to find great white sharks, you know? But a lot of people think that this is what we see when the research team is out on the water. Or if you go to the beach, this is what you'll see standing on the beach where this is a beautiful day. It's nice and sunny, the water is clear, and you can really see that white shark in the water. And you can even see that top fin, the dorsal fin sticking up out of the water as well. Now, unfortunately, this is really not the typical day when the research team is out studying these white sharks. What we usually see is this, what we call a shark smudge or a shark shadow. It's really hard to see the shark. It's underneath the surface of the water. Sometimes we get a really bad glare and you can just see that outline of that white shark. But do you think when the research team is out on the water that they just boat back and forth along the coastline all day, hoping to maybe see that shark shadow? 
Hmm. What do you think? How do you think we find these white sharks? What do you think? Now we actually use a spotter pilot. And our spotter pilot, his name is Wayne Davis, and he is our eyes in the sky. And with this, Wayne actually has the best view out of everyone because he's higher up in the air, so we can actually see those sharks from the air as he is flying. So once Wayne finds us that shark, he is able to send that GPS unit of where that shark is, and he will direct the research boat to the shark and then they are able to tag it and study it. So with that now we can finally talk about the shark tags today and the first tag I'm going to be talking about is what we call an acoustic tag. So the photo to my left you will see the researcher that we collaborate with Dr. Greg Skomal. He is out on the pulpit of our research boat and he is tagging that shark there, that white shark in the water. And as I said, sometimes it's hard to see a white shark. So if you look really closely, you are able to see that shadow of that shark in the water below him. And to the right of me, or should be right above me, is that acoustic tag, which is the first tag that we are going to talk about. So the acoustic tag works with acoustic technology, which is really awesome. So I do have, this is what an acoustic tag looks like. So you can see here. And this acoustic tag works with what is called an acoustic receiver. So, which is attached to a yellow buoy. So what is kind of right here beside me is that yellow buoy. And then here, is what that acoustic receiver looks like. So this black cylinder is hanging in the water underneath that yellow buoy that you see and that acoustic receiver and this tag work together for us to be able to see where our sharks are swimming. Now, how this awesome system works is that if a shark that has that acoustic tag on it swims by one of these receivers, it will detect it and it will record that that shark swam by it. And it will record the date, the time, and the number that that tag has. So every one of these acoustic tags has a special number, just like how maybe your mom or dad or yourself all has a phone number. So that tag will have its own number so we know that it is with that specific shark that it is tagged with. Now, when the research team tags a shark with the acoustic tag, it goes at the base of its dorsal fin. So here we have my helpful shark stuffy friend to help demonstrate where our acoustic tag goes. And here is just a mock version of our acoustic tag. This is a 3D printed version of it. There you can see that. And then what will happen is that this tag will go right here at the base of the dorsal fin and the tag itself will hang off of the string and float in the water column or hang beside the shark as it's swimming. Now a lot of people will ask, well how do these tags stay in the shark's body? Now if you look at the photo here, you'll see that there's that little dart at the end of the acoustic tag where my mock dart is my green little clip here. With that, once our researcher is tagging the shark, that dart goes into the muscle of the shark and it stays there. It's like a fancy ear piercing for a shark. Now this does not hurt the shark, but this is how we are able to see where these sharks are swimming along our coastline. Now can anyone guess how many white sharks are tagged here in the Atlantic Ocean? What do we think? How many white sharks are tagged in the Atlantic Ocean? 
Hmm. We have over 200 white sharks tagged here in the Atlantic Ocean, which is really exciting. So we have these sharks with these tags on them and we are able to track them as they are swimming here in the ocean. I'm seeing a lot of people say, does this tag fall off? Well, sometimes it can fall off, but this tag is meant to stay with the shark for the rest of its life. Sometimes it can get fall, sometimes it can work its way out or fall off, just like how, you know, our bodies can reject an ear piercing. The same thing can happen. But what's really awesome about this acoustic tag is that the battery life on it lasts for 10 years. So we are able to have a lot of information from that one shark for a very long time. I'm gonna put this tag on my dorsal fin here beside me so we can just see how it is set here on the side of our dorsal fin. But today I did want to show you a video of how fast it actually is to tag one of these sharks here in our ocean. So this video is gonna show you a day out on the research boat and you will see out on the pulpit is, is the researcher that we collaborate with, which is Dr. Greg Skomel. He does work for the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries. And with that, you will see he is holding the tagging pole. And then again, as I said, it is hard to see the sharks in the water, but if you look really closely, you will be able to see that shadow come up along the side of the boat. And you'll able to see Greg be able to tag that white shark there as it, it is still swimming. So let's press play so we can watch this video. So as you can see here, the boat is coming up beside that shark. Greg is at the end of the pulpit. And then it is a quick in and out of the water and it's done. So sometimes if you look away too fast, you're actually gonna miss the shark being tagged. So this is how fast of a process it is to tag white sharks here. Once the shark is tagged, the research boat will boat away and go on to the next shark to be researched. Now, there are other kinds of shark tags that researchers do use. They do not just only use that acoustic tag. So let's talk about the other kinds of tags that researchers can use to study sharks. The first tag we have here is the PSAT tag. So the PSAT tag is a definitely, it looks a lot different from the acoustic tag that we just talked about. Now the acoustic tag was just a long solid piece where this kind of looks like, looks a little bulky. It has a little ball at the end with a long antenna and that is the PSAT tag. And here is a real PSAT tag as well for you guys to look at. And again, you, you can see it has that antenna and the ball and then the bottom part as well. Now PSAT is actually an acronym for something else. So what do we think the PSAT stands for? What do we think that PSAT stands for? Hmm. So PSAT's tag stands for Pop-Off Satellite Archival Tag. I know that that's kind of a tongue twister, right? Pop-Off Satellite Archival Tag. So now knowing what PSAT stands for, what do we think that this tag is designed to do? So we know it is a pop-off satellite archival tag, but what do we think that this tag does? Hmm. If you're saying that it pops off, you are correct. This tag is designed to pop off, but before it is popped off, it does archive information for us. So here is a 3D printed version of our PSAT tag. Now, what the PSAT tag records is water depth, water temperature, 
and light levels in the water. So light levels will help scientists know what time of day it is, if it's the sunrise or sunset, to kind of help know when these sharks are doing different things in the water. So for water depth, that tells us where the shark is. If it's really deep in the water or if it's closer to the surface, water temperature. Is it in, in more warmer water? Is it in colder water as well? So this tag will be able to archive and record all of that information. What's really cool about the PSAT tag is that the scientist can code on the tag when it pops off. So much like the acoustic tag, it is put on the same way, but the researcher can say it's going to pop off in a month, in two months, six months, a year, and in that time frame, this little tag is recording all of that data of water depth, water temperature, and light levels of where that shark is swimming, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to bring back our stuffed shark friend to tell us where that this tag goes. And it goes to the same spot of where our acoustic tag goes, at the base or the bottom of where the dorsal fin meets our shark body. And again, that piece, that tag does have a little spot that goes into the shark's muscle. And then the piece, that tag does hang here off of our shark's body. So you would see it would look something like this. And I am going to put our PSAT tag here on our dorsal fin behind us as well, so you can see that there. Now, we have one more tag to talk about today, which is the spot tag. Now, the spot tag is a very interesting tag that some researchers do use to look at sharks. Some researchers that are studying marine mammals like dolphins or whales or people are putting these kinds of tags on sea turtles as well. So it's very good to note that all the tags that we're talking about today, the acoustic tag, the PSAT tag, and the spot tag are just not used on sharks. Scientists are putting these kinds of tags on all kinds of species of animals in our oceans. So they are, they are used for many things. So our spot tag stands for a smart position and temperature tag. Now it's very different about this tag is that this tells us where the position of where the shark is at the surface of the water, where the other tags that we talked about, the acoustic tag and the PSAT tag can tell us where the shark is and different data as the shark is underneath the surface, swimming in the ocean. Where our spot tag tells us the position of that shark when it's at the surface of the water. So here is the spot tag as well, so you can see what that looks like. And the spot tag, as I said, tells us where the shark is at the surface of the water. Now you can see here in this photo that the shark is at the surface of the water and you can see that spot tag there on the side of its dorsal fin. Now the reason why this tag does get put on the side of the dorsal fin because it's at the highest point of the shark's body. And that's usually the part of the shark that we see coming out of the surface of the water. So let's go back to this photo where you can see that dorsal fin is up out of the water, but the rest of the shark's body is not. Or like this photo again where you can see the dorsal fin is up out of the water, but the rest of the shark's body is not. So with that, every time the shark's dorsal fin with that tag on it comes out of the water, it will send a satellite signal to the researcher to say where that shark is currently, which is pretty cool. Now for this kind of tag, researchers do have to 
capture the shark to put it on its fin. It is a different method than the acoustic tag and the PSAT tag that with this one, you do have to capture the shark to put it on. This is a tag that the research team here does not use on these great whites, but there is a sport fisherman out of South Carolina that we collaborate with that does put, put these on. And it is one way that we are able to look at more sharks throughout the Atlantic Ocean. Now, again, we're going to bring my trusty helper today to show again where our mock spot tag goes right here on the side of the dorsal fin. And again, let's put this on my handy dandy wooden shark fin up here so you can see it as we are continuing to talk. So these are the three tags we're going to talk about today, that acoustic tag, the PSAT tag, and the spot tag. And throughout the talk today, I'm sure you are wondering, well, how can we find these sharks? How can we maybe for ourselves, as someone that's not a scientist, look at where these sharks are moving and know where these sharks are in our ocean? Well, here at the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy, we have a little app called Sharktivity. And the Sharktivity app, you can look at this online or download to a phone or an iPad, and you are able to see where white sharks have been spotted along the coastline of Massachusetts, and then as well as throughout the east coast of the United States. So I know this map right now looks a little crazy, so let's break it down a little bit and talk about each of the icons that you are seeing. The first icon is that light blue square with the shark fin. So what that icon is showing us is that is where a shark has been spotted or seen. So anytime the research boat is out on the water, they will put out that little kind of icon and put in a detection of where a shark has been seen. But what is really cool is that say, if you are on a boat or you are on the beach and you see a great white shark, you can actually input your own sighting onto this app. So this is a really awesome way that the community can be involved in science and showing where they are seeing these sharks here along our coastline. The next icon you'll see is that orange icon with a little like beacon coming out of it. And those are where the locations of our acoustic receivers are. So do you remember these? We talked about them at the beginning of the talk. These acoustic receivers help detect sharks with an acoustic tag on it. So these will be placed, you can kind of see a few of them here on the photo. Throughout the research season, those are updated to see what sharks were recorded on those receivers. So you can see what shark, what tag sharks have been recorded on those. Then you will see, which you don't see any on this screen, but a red square is what is called a shark alert, or meaning that this is when a shark is spotted near a public beach. So this alert can be put out for public safety ways so people know that sharks are near that area. And then last but not least, there is this green icon, which this green icon is showing where those sharks with a spot tag have been seen. So that is when anytime a shark with this tag is on it comes up to the surface, it will be detected and then that, that detection is shown on the app. Now you'll see here that if you're looking at this, you're saying, I don't see any green on this. Well, that is because a lot of these sharks with that spot tag on it are tagged down south. So if we expand the map out a little bit, you will see a lot of those green dots more along the south of the east coast of the United States. So this is one way at home, if you're interested in looking at sharks and seeing where they are going, this is a great way to be able to 
maybe do your own little shark science at home and look at where they are at. With that, everyone, we are done with our shark talk today. Just as a review, those three tags again, we have our spot tag, we have our PSAT tag or the pop-off satellite archival tag, and then we finally have the acoustic tag. So thank you guys for learn, coming in and learning more about tags. Thank you for everyone that has come today and being able to learn about shark tagging and also shark tracking. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and, the, and a great rest of your week. Again, my name is Kristen Kibblehouse. I'm the community engagement manager here at the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. Thank you guys for tuning in. Bye, everyone.